Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Grooves and Motivation Live. I am Jermaine Morgan. Listen, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is a really interesting topic for creatives and musicians and just talented people in general. So you're going to want to hang around for this one. I'll give you the title. Your talent might be your problem. <laughs> just hang around. We're going to find out. All right, stay tuned. All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let's jump right on into this thing. Uh, and again, I always have to give my little if you are watching wherever you watch from, be sure to let me know in the comment section. I always love to see that. And uh, I'm talking to the talented folks out there today. And given that this is mostly musicians who watch this, uh, this live broadcast, I should start calling this thing a podcast. I've said that several times. But for the musicians who watch this, um, be sure to drop where you watch watching from in the chat and we're gonna get into this thing i got a little groove i was playing around with this is uh this is something that's actually a part of a song that i have yet to release now the song is created but i have yet to release it you just you just getting a little uh eight bar section of a loop here but i was just playing around with this this morning so anyway i'm just playing around on my little four string the little jm signature four string bass before i forget i'm gonna go ahead and drop that in the chat uh, because i'm seems like i'm notorious for forgetting that type of stuff and letting you guys know how you can find this stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and before we get started i'm gonna drop it in the chat so if you want to check out what i'm playing and all that good stuff you can uh you can look it up in the chat chicago is in the building what's up rudy all right so let's 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 jump on into this thing we're gonna jump into this groove real fast uh let me see here here we go here we go Happy New Year, everybody. I forgot to say it. Thank you, Charles. Good morning to you. What's up, Marcus? David, I see you, man. I want to stay on this one for a second. Let me see if I can loop this. Sorry, guys, for breaking up the groove. I want to stay on the one. Let me see if I can loop this. All right, let's see. Let's try that. And I, want, 
I, I want I wanted to go a little longer than that. So let me let me do this. Let's take the guitars out. Uh
trying to figure out how I'm going to land it. those triplet, uh, triplets up against that rhythm like a drummer. Feeling right just yet. like a recording session or coming up with a bass line will sit there for like I ain't gonna say hours but I'll sit there for a while like just on that same thing until I really get something that I feel good about before I put it down <laughs> cause I'm like we not putting that out there
<laughs> I see you, Charles. Yeah, you got to hit that one, Doc. That, I want that uh, I want that hit every other time. Duck. I see you, David.
stuck in a funk loop this morning. Thank <laughs> you. 
As you see that that groove you could just you could stay there for hours you can if the groove feels right you can stay there for hours so i didn't play myself sweaty in here so <laughs> i gotta stop all right so uh pardon the pun he said i think ghost notes are quietly everyone's favorite part of being a bass player <laughs> pun is taken we, we we get it we it's all good um so a Z Azium, if I'm if I'm uh, saying that correctly, he said is a five string, uh, is a five string of the bass going to be available or is it too early to ask? Can't get enough of that tone, man. Thank you so much. Actually, yes, a five string available, uh, a five string version will be available of this bass. And you can actually go ahead and if you wanted to place your order, it's like on the website you can select a five string. Uh, version of it just know uh it's slightly custom so it will be a little wait uh to receive it but yeah i don't currently have any in stock but yes there is a five string version available that looks identical to this and the next thing we're working on is the modification both this base is passive and the five string will be passive but we are working uh currently on getting an active version of the five string um, that will be an upgrade option as well uh, on the website when we launch uh, the five string. Well, not launch it, but once we uh, you see me playing the five string, that upgrade option for it to be active will be available uh, nine volt as well. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining in this morning with me. So I, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time since we didn't we didn't groove you. <laughs> <laughs> we can groove you this morning most of the people that like to jump in the comments and like man play something that tells me you got here late because i play for a long time most of these times when i'm on here i normally play for anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes i'm playing at the beginning so that's the straight plan and i'm not talking so if you 
showing up telling me to play you got here late so, <laughs> so that's my little disclaimer all right so real quick um i just want to leave y'all with a few points for the 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 little thought the idea that i had in mind for today your talent might be your problem i know for a lot of people they're like wait a minute hold on now what you, what you talking about <laughs> what you talking about willis your talent might actually be your problem for a lot of talented musicians I've found that oftentimes that talent get in, gets in the way. And I'm going to give you four points, and I'll try to go through these really, really quickly. But I'm going to give you four points, and be sure to stay all the way to the end because I'm going to try to explain everything that I'm talking about. But the four points, number one, point number one, talent has to be developed. Just having raw talent is awesome. And I know a lot of people, even from back home, that are just amazingly talented. And um, even my own kids, you know, I'm fortunate to have some musically inclined children, especially my oldest daughter. If you've been here around for a while, you know, my oldest daughter, she has perfect pitch and basically all of the above synesthesia and just everything music, everything artsy. She is um, she she is very gifted. Some of that stuff I wish like, Lord, now you could have gave me just some of that you know <laughs> but no the, basically the perfect pitch thing she's her pitch and, and she plays right now her focus is keyboards and all that kind of stuff but my to my point even that i learned a valuable lesson in having a daughter who has perfect pitch because i always and they just forgive me this is my ignorance speaking right here but er, early on i always thought for people who had perfect pitch like like music in general was much easier for them it just kind of came natural to them and it does to a certain degree but i learned as i'm saying today with point number one that talent has to be developed that for her it's you know it's a gift but still we're just going to kind of label it talent today that talent has to be developed because i watched her you know even though she can hear the keys of songs and certain solos and stuff she can sit like i'm playing my albums and stuff and she sits in the car and sings not only my solos but intricate solos from other players on the records like my guy Quaman Fowler Fowler is playing like a solo on one of the songs and she knows it verbatim he's playing it on the ewe like that's like the synth version of a saxophone or clarinet or whatever and so he's playing this solo on an ewe and just ripping it and she's singing it note for note I'm like where they do that at so, so the ear that natural part of her ear is kind of developed, but when it comes to the mechanical execution of it all, she has to work on it. And it's not as easy to just sit down and just because you can hear it, it's not as easy to sit down and execute exactly what you're hearing. And I've watched her, she's 11 now, and she's been, she's been at this thing playing the keyboard since, seriously, since she's been about four. Uh, four or five she's been you know trying to really play the keyboard and, and you know over the years she's been getting more and more serious with it and so as I've watched her I've watched her struggle I've watched her like try to figure stuff out and I help her a lot but I try to take a you know backup approach so to speak to her learning uh, you know and no, no, all due respect to brother Joe Jackson but I don't Joe Jackson my kids you know I let them kind of learn at their own rate and I do encourage I do try to inspire them but uh, as I said before, if you weren't here before, I should share it briefly. When my kids were really young, still young, but when they were younger, uh, I took more of a hands-on approach to their learning when I saw they were interested. It's like I pounced on them, you know. Uh, my son showed interest in the drums. I got him a little, you know, small drum kit, and I was always staying on it. You got to do this. You got to work on this. You got to work on that. And I was always pushing, pushing, pushing. And the same thing with my daughter. Uh, early on, I bought her a keyboard and everything, and I seen that she was interested and she was talented. And so I started pushing her. I started pushing her. And I noticed early on, they kind of backed away. That interest kind of went away because I was so, so to speak, hands on. And I think I intimidated them, too, because obviously I play and they know I play all those instruments. And so they just like, yeah, I'm not interested. And the more I backed away and just kind of by the advice of my wife, I'm not going to take all credit for that. But she did kind of tell me. You know, just kind of, you know, just see what they do on their own instead of you kind of, you know, taking the wheel, so to speak. And listening to her counsel, I, uh, fellas, listen to your wife. <laughs> but I, I listened to that 
And over the years, I watched them develop on their own. And now when I do go and help them, it's more from a standpoint of like with my daughter, she'll want to play something for me. Hey, dad, look what I learned, this type of thing. And she'll play for me and I'll sit down on the keyboard after she finishes. I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know, but you could try this and this and I'll show her a few chords and then I'll get up. And she might ask me, hey, what was that again? And I'll show her and then I'll get up, I'll leave. And so even with my son, my son is less interested as my daughter. He's He's more of a singer. He loves singing, but he, he like he can play the drums. He's getting pretty good on drums. But even with him, he has a drum set in his room. And what I'll do is I'll go in his room. I'll jump on the drum set and just rock out. Just go for it. And I'll leave. I'll just get out of the way. And sometimes I'll show him different stuff that I've done. Sometimes he'll ask me stuff, but he's kind of a little bit more competitive. So he, I, I got it. I got it. So he'll try it on his own, and I might correct a little bit. But after that, I just leave and I'll, I'll be gone and I'll let them handle it and, and kind of learn their way and figure it out on their own. But at the end of the day, there are things I am now that they've kind of developed a real hunger for it. Now I'm starting to kind of develop that talent with them. Um, and, and it's more of a guiding development for them. It's not so much hands on. Do this, do this, do this. It's like. I'm letting them hear music when they're around me. Certain things I'm letting them listen to. Certain things like we're listening to music and my daughter naturally does it, but I'll kind of suggest to my son every now and again. I said, you hear that? You hear that drum? You hear those drums? You hear what he's doing with the hi-hat? That's pretty cool, right? You know, so it's kind of like that slightly suggestive uh, leadership that I'm giving to hopefully develop. And it has been working to develop their own uh, skills because it's not a force fed type deal and they're enjoying the process. And so I don't ever want them to take that enjoyment away from the process of learning because nobody forced me in some areas. I wish I had been forced to develop more, but, um, and so basically I'm, I'm kind of taking that approach with my kids, uh, would kind of fine tune in certain things that they're missing and that type of thing. So that's number one it has to be developed. Sorry for telling that long story, but I just wanted to give you guys some uh, context for that. So number two must be disciplined. Having all that talent, and this is something I learned early on as a uh, young musician. I will never forget. I was playing guitar. This is I was new to guitar. Back in old school country church, you know, we backed the preachers up. Baptists, you know, the preachers will hoop, you know. And God said, uh, and uh, you know, you would back them up and you, you would be playing and all that kind of stuff. So uh, when the preacher, I thought he was ready to tune up. Me being my young self, I was probably 12 or 13 playing the guitar. Uh, he, he had a little tune in his voice. And uh, so I got behind him and I started playing. He's like, no, nah, uh -uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet, musician. And I was so embarrassed. I, I never forgot that. Uh, so from that point on, I kind of learned watching my older brother and, and other people. And, you know, even my mom was a musician. I would watch and pay attention to how they approached, uh, like backing up a preacher, just a church talk here, backing up a preacher. You know, I want to think, I think one of the things my mom taught me, she said, generally when a preacher is ready to close, he literally closes his Bible. That's like your cue to, Hey, I'm wrapping this thing up and you can kind of come and maybe for you musicians that don't know. Uh, I know everybody got iPads and stuff. Now, generally, the pastor will give you a, a, a cue when he's ready for you to come in. So I had to learn in that regard of discipline, the discipline of waiting, not necessarily my playing, so to speak, but just little small steps like, OK, you have to kind of learn to watch the discipline of watching, not always going for it. You know, like here when I'm playing around YouTube, that, that type of thing. Uh, I, I'm a little bit more unchained, so to speak. It, it's a little bit, I'm a little bit more all over the place. But when it comes to more of a professional setting or if I'm recording in the studio, I, I find my moments. I discipline myself. Don't come out the gate swinging. You know, when the groove is first getting established, let the groove marinate. Don't, you know, don't be so quick to give me anything. In a lot of instances, even in learning that uh, level of discipline, I had to learn how to dial back the discipline so to speak because as i got to working with different producers they knew i could play but a lot of times i would have the tendency to pull back because it's like too much discipline right i'm saying discipline but it was like too much uh pull, pulling back so to speak and so they would have to tell hey man come out come out a little bit more give me a little bit more so i had to learn okay what's too much what's not enough 
those types of things, these different lessons that we learn. So just being talented and having a whole bunch of riffs and having all these things is good, but having good placement and having good discipline about where you place things is always better. You know, have your moments where you explore like I was just doing for 30 minutes. Have your moments where you explore. You see what feels good. You, you come up with a lot of ideas. See what works. See what don't work. You got to have those moments because those moments keep the creativity fresh. Those moments keep the playing interesting. Those moments keep you enjoying it because even with a horse, you know, you got to give him, you got to take the, the, the uh, reins off of him and let him run free. He's a horse. He's built to do this. He has all this energy. He has all this stuff that he wants to, you know, let out. But when you're riding him, he has to have the discipline. Hey, when I pull back on these reins, you need to, you need to stop. You know what I'm saying? So you, you have to have that discipline and have that balance of knowing when it's enough when it's too much and being able to fill out the room, being able to fill out the situation, like the, the example that I gave with the pastor, being able to know when somebody's ready, being able to know when, okay, we need to move back out of the way and let the vocals have a little bit, that kind of thing. So being a little bit more disciplined in that regard, I think you guys get the point there. So point three, uh, your talent must be accompanied with character. Oh yeah, here we go. Your talent must be accompanied accompanied with character i've seen so many great and i've talked about that a lot on this channel so this is nothing new uh you know but your your talent your talent has to be accompanied with character um again i've seen many many people that i know and i'm cool with i've seen them ruin their reputation just by not having good character or or here's the other thing the perception of your character being off now there's a there is a friend that i know a musician that i know who is a really reputable guy really good once you get to know him he's a really good guy phenomenal musician i mean just really great all-around guy uh, but through people that don't really know him that way and some that do know him well he's kind of like messed up his name to a degree because of inconsistencies there have been inconsistencies and in just say like there were was a gig or something or something he was supposed to show up for and due to circumstances i'm not going to say beyond his control but due to circumstances he didn't make the gig or last minute having to call out for the gig and having to try to they having to scramble to find somebody else to learn all the material and all this type of stuff so he put the people who were doing the gig in a predicament that like really didn't look good for his reputation. Now, this has happened more than once. Now, the, again, the guy is a great guy, but that part of his uh, reputation is now in question because character, let, let's define character. Because when we think about character, we always think about, uh, for most people, when they think about character, uh, a person just on, you know, social media or something being really vulgar or you know, doing something that's really detrimental to the whole group in terms of just negative foul conversation or this person got a bad drinking habit or bad smoking. Habit. We, we think about it in those regards. But character is basically uh, consistency. Character is consistency. When we really look at what character really is, we're dealing with consistency. So it really doesn't matter that you don't curse, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do all this kind of stuff. That's great. And that's a that's a good self image to have. But when it comes to your consistency, like in the regard of uh, my friend that I'm telling you about who has called out more than once, more than twice, more than three times with certain gigs. Now that speaks to your consistency, consistency. One thing about a character, the letter A is considered a character, right? Um, letter A, B, C, like A is always A or let's let's go this route. The number one is a character. Number one is always number one, no matter if, if it's raining outside, <laughs> if it's a storm, uh, if it's a flood, number one is still going to be number one. The, uh, the character, like a statue, when we think about the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, uh, when you see it, it's going to be having the same pose. Every time you go through there, that lady, she's standing there holding that torch. I don't care what's going on. They, they, they call the, the weather has issued a severe 
a thunderstorm watch. You don't put the torch down in the pocket and get down and try to hide up under something. No, that statue is going to be standing there. That character is going to be standing no matter what happens, no matter what type of weather we get, no matter what type of storm comes. And guess what? At the end of the day, if worse comes to worse, and I hope it never does, but if worse comes to worse and something is strong enough to knock that statue over, it never breaks character. It never changes no matter what happens. So if you were to push that thing over into the ocean, I guarantee you, if, or the water rather, if you go down and look at it and get a good look at it, I guarantee it's still, whatever's intact, is still standing in that same position that you put it in because that's character. It's consistent. It's going to stay in the same position no matter what comes up. I got to keep my word no matter what comes up. Now, if for, you know, we know things happen, life happen, you know, death in the family, uh, unforeseen circumstances like sickness or something like that. Well, you know, you got to deal with that accordingly. That that shouldn't be a, a, a something that calls on your character. The thing that this becomes a problem with, if this is a recurring issue with you, every time somebody gets sick, you out. Every time you get sick, you out. Every time there's a death in the family, you out. We know if anything happens, we can't count on you. Now, that's something uh, to be said about your character. You're not dependable in that regard because where you might be consistent with something or somebody else, with the main thing, you're not consistent. So we can't trust you. And if we can't rely on you, it's equivalent to you not having a good character. You're no good to us if we can't count on you. So that that character uh, well, your your talent, rather, it doesn't matter how good you are if your talent is not accompanied with good character. And remember, I'm not just talking about just doing bad stuff, just simply being consistent. If your talent is not accompanied with that, what good is your talent? That just means people can um, utilize the talent most of the time. But when it counts, you're not thought of. I've had situations to come up with different people that I've known over the years and they would be a perfect fit musically because of their gifting level. their even their discipline with being able to play and know how to play the right stuff. Uh, and I mean, development is out the question. It, it thing is developed. They, they know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, how loud, how soft, all of the above. We cross out all the checks, but being dependable, I can't depend on them. So therefore, I can't call them because that talent, even though it's good, it's not aligned with character. And so it's of no benefit to me in the moments that I would really benefit from it the most. So we have to make sure that I, our character stays intact. Our character has to stay intact. Um, you know, if, if, if we're going to be talented, we have to keep that character intact. Now, this is the last one, uh, point four that I'll spend just a little time on. It has to be strategically leveraged in order to serve you long, long term. I know that was a lot of words. So I'm going to say it again, just in case you guys are writing this down. Your character, uh, not your character, but your talent. We're talking about talent. Your talent has to be strategically leveraged in order to serve you long term. Let me give you all a good example. I see a lot of people and um, just just for context, one of my passions that I've been talking about a lot lately is music and money and musicians having something that serves us a long term. I've literally been having conversations with phenomenal musicians that are having to do other things because it's, it's no longer serving them or they've reached a different point in their life or their life. Um, and there's like, I, I'm not doing that gig anymore. I'm not doing certain types of gigs anymore. So as good as they are, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And so many of us as musicians end up suffering because we reach a certain point in our career that like, this is not cool anymore. But here's the reason why we suffer, I believe. Because most of us didn't strategically leverage our ability when we had the opportunity to do so. Now we used it. We use our talent like on social media now, this this new age of I sound like an old guy right now, but this new age of social media 
has allowed many younger musicians to leverage their skill to gain a following, right? Many of the younger musicians have leveraged their skills and even leveraging covers like cover tunes and doing that type of thing to build a following and build a, a really, really great following, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I did a couple of covers here lately, um, but using that to gain a following, here's the point. How strategic are you in what you're doing when you're using that? You plan these covers, man. I got to get some stuff out. I hear so many people. Uh, matter of fact, I just recently had a conversation with somebody. So my man, I got to start posting more and I got to get my YouTube channel going. I got to get this. I got to get that. And in my mind, having done this for years now, because I've been at this for a while in terms of the um, being uh, present on social media and using this as a, you know, form of marketing and advertising for my business that's online it's uh, my online music business um what one of the things i hear or i see with a lot of the musicians that i know personally that's talking about sorry guys uh, a lot of the musicians musicians that i know that's talking about um getting their videos and you know getting their social media and stuff going is like well how how exactly how exactly are you planning on using that? How exactly are you planning on leveraging that? Or are you just, I got to get out content for the sake of getting out content. And I know the idea is out of sight, out of mind. And most of us stop there. Out of sight, out of mind. If, if I'm not posting anything, don't nobody know to call me for anything. And that's for most of us as musicians, that's where it stops. I got to put out something so people know I exist. So people can hopefully call me for gigs. And the more I'm seen, the more gigs I get called for because people know I can play. People know I'm good, this, that, and the other. That is great. I mean, it's awesome. And you might land some really, really great gigs. So don't let what I'm saying discourage you. You might actually land some really great gigs by posting and putting stuff out there because the world does know you exist. And I know a lot of people have jump started their careers by posting. I, for one, um, I was playing a major gig a major uh, gig, uh, you know, for a church, uh, one of the largest churches in Atlanta when I started posting on social media. But nobody knew I was playing for that church because I wasn't posting about the church. I was trying to establish my own stuff. And re the reason why nobody really knew about the church, I kind of had this mentality early on and I posted a couple of things here and there, but very little stuff that I post about the time that I was at that ministry versus the musicians that I see now, like always posting at church. It's like, if I was going to post, that would have been the time to post. Like, man, look, you're in front of thousands of people every single week, like multiple times a week, post it, post it. But I, I wasn't thinking like that because my mentality at that time, just giving you some background, my mentality at that time was I didn't want to be known as the guy who played for so-and-so that, that really has been my whole MO from uh, way back when I didn't want to be known as the guy who played from so-and-so mainly because I'm a long-term thinker. Uh, I didn't want to be associated with only being this person's musician with only being this person's bass player or guitar or whatever I'm playing at the time, because here's the thing. Once that gig is over with, who am I? I never wanted my identity to be tied up into somebody else or another artist or that type of thing, because if that artist decides to have a mood swing or want to go a different route and they let me go, then my name is just, you know, I, I got nothing. I'm the guy that used to play for this person. No, I didn't want I didn't ever want to be that. So I tried to organically. Uh, I didn't start out that way. Again, YouTube started as an outlet, but I as I figured out what I was doing, I started organically trying to build my own brand. Uh, so that's why a lot of the things you guys are seeing now are a result. You know, all these things are a result of me trying to organically build my own brand because I did not want to be known for being the guy that played for so-and-so. Right. Uh, even though it was cool and it looked good on the resume, I didn't want to be exclusively known for that. So I worked really, really hard on building my brand. So all that being said, I was very strategic in how I was leveraging how I was using social media. Um, I did something called say it with your strings. If any of y'all been rocking with me for a long time, y'all remember that I did that almost 10 years ago, maybe a little more than 10 years ago now, but I did this contest called say it with your strings. 
And I see people doing competitions and contests and stuff like over the last two, three years, especially when COVID was going on, everybody was doing challenges. Uh, not the challenge, like I had unlock your sound, not that, but I'm talking about challenges where, you know, one person put a track up and everybody play to it. Well, for me, if I was going to ever do any of that type of stuff personally, and I'm giving y'all a game right now, if I was going to ever do any of that type of stuff personally, I was always trying to leverage it for something else. The reason why I did say it with your strings, one of the main reasons, it was, well, it was two reasons, actually. When we look at it, it was actually more than two reasons. But the main two reasons for me, number one, I had released an album, my solo album, uh, my first uh, debut album as a solo bassist, The Journey Continues. And I used tracks from that record for other bass players to play on. And now what that did for me as an artist that kind of jump started my career as an artist, because my music was being played um, by bass players around the world. So everybody was hearing and learning my music. And so when they see in, in the, the street, the strategic part of that, whenever these other bass players posted in this competition, that traffic comes right back to like, OK, what is this competition? Who's hosting this competition? So you automatically would have to do research to figure out who I am about this competition. So in the bass community, it started spreading like wildfire and people started, you know, finding me who weren't who probably hadn't heard of me before then. And so like that really helped to grow my platform. Now, my whole point in doing that was to leverage that to sell more records to sell more of the album, to get the music out for more people to hear it. One of the reasons. Then the other thing was to leverage my platform, the little platform I did have, to give other bass players the opportunity to shine. And then to build community in the bass community because we were bringing in um, all types of different judges like um, Maurice Fitzgerald, uh, Brandon Brown, Tony Gray. Uh, I think Adam Nitty was a judge one year. Um, so many others. I don't want to leave out names because it was some incredible judges, but it was like big time cats in the industry and we were merging worlds. Uh, we partnered with um, Bass Players United when they were getting started. Uh, we partnered with Groove Gear when they were getting started. We partnered with Bass Musician, uh, no, it was at Bass Musician Magazine when they were getting started. So now all of these different platforms are huge and massive now, but we were partnered with these folks before they blew up. You know what I'm saying? Like with the say it with your strings, that whole thing, we were partnered. So I was leveraging all of that different stuff. So over the years, that helped to cultivate some relationships that helped over time to propel even my own artistry. Uh, the, the relationship with Bass Players United helped to push my own personal artistry along. So all of these things I'm telling you, just not telling random stories. I was being strategic with these relationships and with these things that I was doing. I wasn't just randomly posting. Everything had a point to it. It was being very strategic in the point. So all of that being said, those are the four points I'm going to leave and I'm going to stop there because <laughs> y'all going to have to come to some trainings for some of these things I'm talking about. But number one, talent has to be developed. If, you, if you're writing down, and I would advise you to write some of this stuff down, uh, talent has to be developed, number one. Number two, talent must be disciplined. Number three, talent must be accompanied with character. And last but not least, number four, it has to be strategically leveraged in order to serve you long term. So me leveraging all those things years ago have now served me long term, you know, and y'all are here. Y'all are here listening. Right. So I've leveraged all those different things. And here's the thing about it. You don't have to be the most talented. I said something like this last week in our live. But you don't have to be the most talented in order for these things to work for you. You don't have to be the most talented. You just have to be very strategic in how you move, right? A lot of the people that you know as some of the top players that you know, all of these guys are not the best. But they are the ones you know because they leveraged something along the way. A lot of the famous singers and famous artists and those different people who are out there now are all them ain't the best, but they leverage something. They leverage something and they use it to their advantage. And now it's serving them long term. And if we're going to move as musicians, if we're going to leave something lasting, then we have to start learning how to leverage what we have. You know what I'm saying? We have to leverage our talent, leverage, use that talent 
to kind of get something else off of the ground. We got to leverage it. Right. I, I here's a secret. I leverage this bass playing every week. If I just got on here and talk, most of y'all wouldn't come listen. <laughs> I'm just telling you like it is when I first maybe now because um, many of you have been around for a while. So I'm not going to insult you guys who've been around for a while. Many of you have been listening and, and you've gotten value. So you will come back. But there are many people who are new to still the grooves of motivation, even though I've been doing this four or five years now. There are many of you who are still new to this concept of what I'm doing. And so without my bass playing or without holding the bass in my hand, you're like, yeah, and no, I don't hear that. Right. So I leverage playing the bass to get your attention. And so now you listen. And so now we could share these nuggets for the ones who hang around and listen all the way to the end. A lot of people, after I get through playing, I'm like, all right, I'm out. I heard what I need to hear. But that's cool to each his own. So you just have to learn how to leverage what you do, right? All right, so let's go through a few of these comments before I jump off of here. Um, Sean Lewis, if I didn't speak, uh, good morning to you, sir. Andy, good morning, man. Thank you for hanging out with me today. David uh, says, I got my five-year-old son, his first electric guitar for Christmas. And I'm constantly reminding myself to let him go at, at his own pace. Absolutely, David, if you're still here. Uh, yeah. Um, Douglas Williams says, I'm going to say it for you. Hit the like button, grooving and <laughs> dropping knowledge. Uh, what's not to like, man? Thank you, Douglas. I appreciate that, man. Um, Peter says, hi, Jermaine. All the best from a bass player in Berlin, Germany. Your playing is so good. Peter, man, I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, I, man. People don't have to be kind, and I appreciate anybody that, you know, leaves comments and that kind of stuff that, that are positive. I really appreciate it. Alter says, um, but they can take the best uh, take after practice. That's not chops. You can't. Oh, okay. Fake. Okay, you can't fake chops. I got you. I see what you're saying. Uh, late to the parade. Uh, happy New Year from the UK. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year again to everybody that I hadn't said it to already. Happy New Year. We made it to 2023, man. This is awesome. We made it. I had some close calls last year, y'all. So I am super, extremely grateful to be here talking to y'all right now because could have been another way last year. But we won't we won't get into that because we, you know, we'd we be an A flat for y'all. <laughs> All right. So, um, Alter says, as long as you're low end, uh, as long as you low end won souls for Jesus, don't matter who was uh, on the end of those digits. I'd be missing all kind of stuff because I'd be talking. Uh, can someone please translate this Chinese for me? All I hear is ego, 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 ego. Uh, okay, I guess I'm I'm lost, man. You have to, you. <laughs> Have to explain it to me what you mean. I, I'm out of context and I don't necessarily get to understand it. All right. Just got in from work. Glad I caught the end of this great stuff as usual. I mean, in a supportive way, I went down to the crossroads. Look out. Sorry, man. I'm getting real on this. Yeah, I'm I'm lost, Alter, man. I, I'm, I'm completely lost. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Xavier Jones. Good afternoon. I was wondering... Uh, how do I schedule a consultation with you, young cat in need of mentorship? Got you. Xavier, awesome question. Now, let's be specific. Are you talking about base lessons or are you talking about just just a coaching uh, life or business coaching call? Because there are two separate ways. Um, but I'm going to mention something really, really quick before I get off of here. Um, Sean Lewis is Jermaine. Continue to bring the positive content god bless you my brother sean man thank you man i appreciate it wolfman sing turn uh, tune in from winchester kentucky your neighbor to the north absolutely absolutely uh thank you all for tuning in so so really quick i want to make mention of this if you guys are part of my email list you already know this but if you're not part of my email list and if you want to be a part of it it's super simple to do all you got to do is go into the description of this video and you can join my email list that way. That way you can stay updated when I send out information uh, like this so you know exactly what to do and how to do it. So so here's what I want to here's what I want to um, 
let you guys know about that you might not be aware of. So we I've been doing base coaching and thank you to my guy that brought it up just a second ago. Give me just a second. I'm trying to grab the link for you guys. Um, all right. So Xavier, he says life and business, life and business side, maybe playing too, but I feel like the former is more important right now. Got you. So Xavier, I'm going to drop two links uh, in the chat. I'm going to drop two links in the chat. The first link is to my base coaching. If you want base coaching, that's the first link that I just dropped uh, into the chat. Now, the second link I'm going to drop if you're looking for, like you're saying, the life and business coaching. So just just in case Xavier is not the only person that's interested in getting a coaching session with me, I'm putting both of them in the chat so you can have the opportunity to um, you can do that with me, uh, set up your coaching session with me. So I, I offer both. I offer and they're two completely different things. We've recently kind of reworked some things on the site. I'm happy to announce. Here's what I'm happy to announce as well. Uh, so I put both of those, uh, Xavier, I put both of those in the, the chat so you guys can uh, um, you guys can check that out there. So so here's what I'm happy to announce. And you'll see is when you click on the base coaching link. One of my base heroes growing up, like literally one of the guys outside of my own family and my brother and other people that I listened to growing up, this was like the guy who literally inspired me to start trying to play solo bass and like really taking bass serious. Because prior to meeting him, I was like all guitar. But when I heard him play, I mean, I could always like play bass a little bit, but I'm like mostly a guitar player. But when I heard this dude play 2000, I think it was 2002, I was at ICC in uh, Itawamba Community College, for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so 2002, I heard this cat playing the bass, and they fooled around and gave him a solo. And it, it was up to that point, I'd never heard anybody do anything like that on bass. And I was just... I was dumbfounded. I, I'm, I was at a loss for words when I heard. I was coming out of one of my classes, and this is what it was. It was like the show choir. Our school had a show choir, and oftentimes they would practice. I would be in the fine arts building, and next to it we had our you know, auditorium and all that stuff. But oftentimes they would practice with the doors of the auditorium open so you could hear the music coming out of the auditorium as you're changing classes and that kind of stuff. And I'll never forget this. I, I heard the music coming out of there, and they were probably doing like, Shaka Khan, tell me something good, something like that. And so I hear this interesting sound, and it sounds like a bass player with a wah-wah pedal. Now, keep in mind, I never heard anything like this solo bass playing at all. I wasn't hip to Victor Wooten. This 2002. Yeah, I'm sad to admit, I didn't know who Victor Wooten was from a hole in the wall or any of the cats. Marcus Miller, I didn't know of any of those cats. I had heard Merlin Lucius and... You know, I heard quartet bass players. The most out there I had got was gospel music with people like Maurice Fitzgerald and, you know, maybe Joel Smith or whoever else was playing those gospel records that I was listening to in the day because I was not reading credits and none of that stuff. Anyway, so I hear over at the auditorium, just like, you know, this like wah-wah thing. It's like, it's I'm going to try to mimic it, but it's going to be really poor. But it was like... <laughs> It was something like that. I'm like, what is that? First and foremost, that's funky. Like, what is that? Because <laughs> I didn't know the song at the time. And uh, so I walk over to the auditorium and this dude, this this black dude, big black dude in here is killing the bass. And I'm sitting like, man, this dude is, and he was doing it on the four string. And I'm, I'm like dumbfounded. Like I literally instantly became a fan that day. And so this guy is Nate Holloman, none other than Nate Holloman. He's going to be mad because I told this story, but he'll get over it. So I hear him playing the bass and I'm like a groupie from that day on. I'm following him all around school and stuff, just trying to get him to show me anything on bass. So oftentimes I would see him in the practice rooms at ICC and I would go bug him and ask him questions about bass and this type of stuff, this, that, and the other. And he would always be kind enough to share any information I would ask him. So anyway, that became one of my long-term brothers over the years. And uh, me and Nate, since 2002, have 
kept in contact, kept a really cool relationship. And so, yeah, I'm happy to announce that Nate is one of our coaches on JermaineMorgan.net. So now if you want base coaching, you got the option of having a lesson with either myself or Nate. And when I say that, it's no competition or anything like that. It's just your choice. Whoever you want to sit down and do a lesson with, uh, you have the option of signing up. You can do a one-time lesson. And again, that link is in the uh, the chat. So again, that's one of the cats that inspired much of what you hear from me now. Like, that's one of the dudes. He's the one that introduced me to the music of Victor Wooten and Otil Burbridge and Marcus Miller and so many countless other solo bass players because up until that point i hadn't heard any of those people it was nate we would go over to his apartment uh sometimes like after uh you know weekends after we get out of school or whatever we was in college and uh i would go hang out with him and this dude would play at that time we wasn't dvds we playing vcrs this dude like had a whole thing full of tapes of bass players so we watching Bass Day 98 and all these different bass players and Billy Sheehan. And he would go through and tell me all these different players. And this is why they sound like this. And this is this. And this is this. And I'm like, my mind was blown. And from that point on, that's what started the whole thing for me to want to become a solo bass player. Because that guy opened the door and he uh, exposed me to all of these different players and showed me that world. And first and foremost, I heard him do it. And I heard him playing Victor Wooten stuff first. And I was like, wait, where are we doing this at? Like, <laughs> I heard him playing Amazing Grace. And he told me, no, no, I didn't do this. This is the cat named Victor Wooten. And so you already know from that point on, hence the, the rest of my career, my trajectory changed because I met Nate Holloman. So I invite you guys to, if you don't do anything else, if you're a bass player, Set up a one-time call with this guy. Set up a one. It's there's so much wisdom, there's so much knowledge there. Uh, even to this day, I still glean. We we I've developed to a certain level in my plan where I'm where I'm able to add a little bit of value to him. But even in that, it's like I still glean from his wisdom from all these years of his playing. You can go on the website. I'm not going to read out his resume. You can go on the website and see some some acts and some different things that he's done. Needless to say very well qualified to show you whatever you're trying to learn on the base. Uh, you know what I'm saying? As well as myself, if you want to do a personal coaching call with me, it doesn't have to be base. It can be on the life business side of things. We can do that as well. But uh, I just had to give y'all that backstory to give y'all context to tell you why I'm so excited to have him on board as part of, you know, one of the coaches on my team because he played a significant role into helping me to get where I am and so if you like what you hear from me, uh, a lot of that credit goes to him uh, playing a role in that. I, I did the work. <laughs> I struggled and I did the work. But nonetheless, he played a vital role in me uh, becoming the player that I am today. So definitely um, set up that coaching call with him today. Um, and we can get that schedule and all those different things. Um, like I said, choose this day <laughs> what you want to do but anyway so let me go back i missed a couple of com uh comments all right so love your videos andre thank you so much i appreciate that life and business side uh maybe playing too okay i read that already all good love your work i love your work you are definitely a light until the bass playing world Ultra, thank you so much man and i'm sorry i missed your comments when you were dropping them in context that way i could have responded i just I've been having to focus on whatever I'm saying because I know when I look at them comments, sometimes I get distracted and I lose my train of thought. So my apologies for that. Um, all right. Wolfman says, look like this is the last comment so far. Uh, Wolfman says, I got my start playing bass, playing guitar and accompaniment uh, band for a show choir. That's cool. That's really cool, man. Yeah, I was playing. Fun fact, I was playing. uh guitar for the jazz band that's when i was in college oh another fun fact tuba tuba was my instrument i i um sixth grade i played tuba i, I picked up the tuba i wanted to play the drums i'm gonna tell this story <laughs> my sad my little tiny violin story i wanted to play the drums and i auditioned for the drums and i made drums 
But there was another guy and me and my little kind nature. Uh, he wanted to play drums too. And, you know, they were out of chairs. It was like only one chair left for drums in the, between me and my guy, Sam. I'm going to call his name. I didn't even call his last name out. But Sam wanted to play the drums. So I said, you know what? It's all good, man. Sam, you can go ahead. I'll let him do it. So Sam made the drums, and then I auditioned and made tuba. So that's how I ended up on tuba in sixth grade, and I went all the way throughout college, and I thought I was going to be a tuba major. So my first two years of college, junior college, because I did a super year, but <laughs> my first two years of junior college were on actually studies on tuba. I was studying to be, uh, I guess, a professional tuba tubist. <laughs> But I'm so glad I changed my major and I changed it to guitar studies. Uh, my third, my third, my super year there, I changed my uh, major to guitar studies. And from there, I switched to commercial music by the time I went to UNA. Uh, but anyway, that's my backstory. So bass has been there the whole time, but by way of tuba. Uh, but I didn't play bass uh, seriously until I moved. And all that kind of stuff after meeting Nate, Alabama, Atlanta, and the rest is history. So now y'all here on Jermaine Morgan's bass lesson. So I had a very interesting journey to bass because bass was the last instrument really that I was, you know, playing. So anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that walk down memory lane. I know y'all learned a lot today. <laughs> so be sure to set up that coaching call, guys. And, and again, if you want to know more about this bass, uh, you can find out more on the website. I put that link already in the chat so you can find that and learn a little bit more about this turn that off uh, yeah so you can learn more about the uh the signature base there and my camera's about to die so i will see you guys on the next time uh i've posted a lot of videos so be sure to go and check those out as well and guys i'm out of here much love to you all peace <laughs>